And our last speaker, um, possibly, at least we don't have any more paper cards, is Dr. Catherine Albrecht um, on, on our study commission and uh, representing con consumer interests in support of the bill. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I know you've been here, the committee, I know you've been here a long time today. Um, I'd like to address some of the things that have been brought up in earlier testimony today. But first, I'm going to give you a bit of my background. I was a member of the RFID Study Commission. We met uh, very diligently for a period of uh, well over a year and a half. During that time, labeling at BBC one, uh, the one big question mark and the one thing that uh, I, I felt the entire commission was brought together to address. I have to say I was disappointed in uh, the commission's willingness or certain members of the commission's willingness to address that. And uh, what kept coming back was that uh, it would be addressed in the legislature if it was not addressed in the commission. Just to give you a little bit of history, uh, we've, I've been working on this issue since 2002. I am the co-author of the book Spy Chips, in which my co-author, Liz McIntyre, and I reviewed 30,000 different documents uh, related to RFID. So we have become quite, quite uh, expert in understanding what the potential is for the technology, how it works, and who might be tempted to abuse it. And uh, to give you a sense of just how long we have needed a labeling requirement or needed labeling legislation, we authored something called the RFID Right to Know Act of 2003, uh, together with a, uh, a, a researchers from uh, Boston University. We put together federal legislation at that time and uh, tried for several years to get someone on the federal level interested in legislating on RFID labeling, which we felt was incredibly important based on the information and the research we had done. Uh, at that point, it has now been introduced into a number of states, and in every case, the lobbyists have uh, come in with uh, big guns fly flying in from all over the country to fight against this. My concern is that uh, today's testimony has dealt a lot with the benefits of RFID, which I, I think that uh, Certainly a case can be made that there are benefits for RFID. I don't think anyone is disputing that. But I think the question is whether this technology should be deployed in a way that consumers would not know that it's there. Um, I hate to be a person who says, I told you so, but many of the things that we talked about in our book, which we researched uh, in 2004 and which was published at the end of 2005 and uh, re-released in 2006, many of our worst concerns and worst fears have actually come true. Uh, just two weeks ago, Janet Napolitano, uh, the newly appointed head of uh, Homeland Security, stated that rather than Real ID, because states like New Hampshire and other states have rejected Real ID, that she would like to propose that this nation move forward with something called an enhanced driver's license. Now, the enhanced driver's license is an RFID-packed driver's license. This would be under federal control through the Department of Homeland Security. It would contain an EPC-compliant RFID tag that can be read from 20 to 30 feet away uh, without a person's permission, without their knowledge. It could be read right through their pocket, their wallet, their backpack, or their purse, because radio waves even travel through walls. So literally, you could point a reader device at someone 30 feet away walking down the street and get back a unique ID number that corresponds to that person. So that is a, a very real concern that we may be looking not at a real ID driver's license, but actually an RFID tag identity tracking document carried on all of our, uh, in all of our pockets and purses. Now, currently in the state of Washington, some 30,000 of these documents have been issued. Based on our preliminary research, the people who have signed up for these for simplified border crossings have not understood that these tags could be read from 30 feet away uh, through their pockets and wallets. And most recently, there was a very disturbing report just a couple days ago that uh, the roadways in three border crossing towns in the state of Washington would be experiencing traffic delays as they implant or, excuse me, as they um, install RFID readers literally in the roads to read the information contained on these driver's licenses. Now, why is this a concern? This is a concern because the version of RFID that the Department of Homeland Security and the State Department have opted to put into enhanced driver's licenses is exactly the same form of RFID being placed now into shoes and clothing and ultimately uh, designed to replace the barcode. It's an EPC tag. It has no encryption. It has no data protection whatsoever. It can be read by anyone with a reader device, which you can get in the back room at Walmart, which uh, you can buy for 50 bucks off of eBay off the internet right now. There was uh, a case just a couple weeks ago where a hacker by the name of Chris Padgett actually drove 
through the streets of San Francisco with one of these RFID readers uh, mounted to the side of his windshield. And as he drove down the street, he was able within a matter of just an hour or two to collect uh, many, many of these numbers from unknowing passersby. This is literally people just walking down the street. So the potential, I think, for abuse here is enormous. The thing that has me especially concerned is that uh, now that we have real ID driver's licenses or enhanced, excuse me, enhanced driver's licenses corresponding to the same technology, same frequency, same protocol as product tags, this means two things. Number one, when you walk into a Walmart store and you pass within range of a Walmart reader, Walmart will be picking up, they won't be able to avoid it, will pick up your EPC tagged driver's license information as well. So they will get your unique ID number. I know it's been emphasized that those are not unique ID numbers. I would say that there's a reason why we don't wear our social security numbers across the front of our t-shirts. And the same will be true of this number. It will be a unique string of numbers associated only with you. Uh, I, would, I believe that it will be the social security number of the 21st century, that each of us will have this national ID number that will be beamed out in a data cloud at uh, a range of about 30 feet around us that can be picked up by what uh, the industry envisions as a network of these readers in place in doorways, in floors, in ceilings, in shelving, literally everywhere we go. So that's number one concern, is not only will they pick up the fact that I'm carrying certain products or certain items, but they'll also pick up my unique identity uh, information from this enhanced driver's license. The second concern is that as the readers are deployed into roads and border crossings and uh, other locations, at the request and uh, through the involvement of the Department of Homeland Security. Let's say that I drive through one of those three uh, border crossing locations in Washington State, which uh, will be actually active within the next month. When I drive past one of those, any RFID tagged item in my car, in my purse, in my trunk, in my suitcase will all transmit information into that reader and be downloaded at the same time. So not only would they know who I am from 30 feet away as I cross the border crossing station, but they will know everything associated with me, including the size and color of my underwear right through my clothing, because that's literally how this information transmits. So we have a very real concern. I know there's been a lot of discussion that this is not uh, taking off. I would say it's taking off much more quickly and much more frighteningly than I ever could have envisioned when I was doing the research. Uh, this is now the fourth time, I believe, that I've uh, come before a body here to testify. Back in 2005, the Commerce uh, Committee worked on this issue extensively. We did, uh, I think, a great job. Uh, the, the Commerce Committee at that time did a great job. I think um, that it was the almost unanimous decision of the RFE Commission that we needed labeling. The Commerce Committee agreed that we needed labeling back in 2005. I cannot emphasize enough how much we need labeling today. One of the groups that I work with is the National Network to End Domestic Violence. Uh, I wish they could have had a representative here today. They have submitted testimony uh, on the federal level into states around the country uh, expressing their alarm that these tags would be issued in clothing, that they would appear in shoes or in other uh, items. There is a company right now, Checkpoint Systems Inc., which is a member of EPC Global that uh, actually now offers for sale a hidden RFID tag that would be hidden in the sole of a pair of shoes and uh, not deactivated at the point of sale. So obviously people with a concern about domestic violence or stalking are extremely concerned that uh, this technology would be issued and someone receiving it would not know that it was there. Uh, we do know of a number of companies right now, a uh, very alarming uh, phone call. Um, actually there's a company called Knox NOX, and uh, one, of, uh, one of our members actually called them up and uh, after hearing about their ability to link video cameras with this technology, and uh, called up this company pretending to be a, a jealous husband who was <coughs> concerned about uh, his wife's fidelity. And he said, would you be able to rig my home with cameras that would be triggered by RFID devices, and could you rig my car so that I could keep a very close eye on my wife when she comes within range? And their answer was, yes, absolutely, we could do that. It would cost you about $10,000 per camera. We'd be happy to install that for you. Your biggest challenge is going to be figuring out how to get your wife to carry or wear an RFID tag on her person. So clearly, if uh, she were to buy a pair of shoes with one of these tags, all he would have to do is scan it once, have that unique ID number, and that could trigger the entire surveillance system. So there are bad actors out there. I would say the bad actors are, in many cases, the very companies that uh, are promoting this technology, not necessarily the industry firms. Um, 